How are your feet, Cal? Really sore. <laughs> I've got blisters on the soles of my feet. Do you want to tell the boys and girls at home what stupid thing you did? Um, I mean, I guess so. Yeah, basically, I ran an ultra marathon, uh, which is 50 miles. It was in uh, Snowdonia in Wales, and it was basically coast to coast. So it started in Porth Madog and finished in Conwy. It went and over some things, though, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. There was about 3,000 metres of ascent throughout the whole thing. So uh, the, the biggest thing it went over was Snowdon. Well, that's a big thing to go over. It's, it's the, I think it's the largest thing in Wales. And you, you decided to run, run over it. Yeah, yeah. I have and no then, sympathy for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there is a there is a reason my feet are in such absolute tatters. It did take fifteen hours to run the fifty miles, so well, you know, you deserve everything you got. Yeah, I, I got a medal. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Hello and welcome back to the Space Jam Continuum, the show where we try to make a cohesive cinematic universe out of something that was never meant to be one. I'm Chris McLennan. I'm Carl Noble. And uh, this is our sort of season one finale, our wrap up. Our yeah, kind of where we're just going to sit down and consolidate all of our ideas. Yeah, and you know, summarise the story so far. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping this can act as a jumping in point for newcomers to the podcast, as we know it can be daunting to uh, listen to... 50 previous episodes of something just to get involved yeah it is it is a, it is a big commitment yeah so a brief uh, explanation then of the premise so for some reason about a year ago we decided uh that we were going to try and uh make a cohesive plot uh of the looney tunes and merry melodies franchise all the way from uh 1937 when porky pig and daffy duck first meet all the way up to the 1996 film space jam yeah um and surprisingly that's what we have been doing yeah, uh, yeah it, it, it it's definitely very cohesive i mean the the material we've had to work with has really helped because it's just so obvious the storyline that runs solidly through solidly through it and yeah. we're we're alarmed frankly that no one has done this before yeah so uh we're going to basically just try and uh, summarise. We'll do the first half this week, second half next week. Yep. We're going to start in 1937, and we're going to get up to the end of 1947 and the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, so, yeah, uh, bear with us. It might be a bit of a bombardment of information. Uh, we do recommend you do go back and listen to uh, old episodes because they're, they're more joke-heavy. Yeah, the, 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 there's, a, there's a lot more kind of laughs throughout you know yeah. because we were able to take a bit more time this is going to be it. a more absurdist sort of affair yeah um there are also catch-up episodes throughout the series called the Universal glossary which just go over some of the the core concepts in a bit more yes. detail uh but right now we're we're going to focus on the plot and what's happened so far so without further ado let's jump into 1937 uh where porky and daffy duck first cross paths <laughs> Okay, so, what do we know? In 1927, Porky Pig, a young pig, you know, his late teens, early 20s, <laughs> uh, struck out on his own, got a house. Yeah. He's into gardening, he was. He was hanging out. He had a human neighbour. That's pretty much... They seem to get on. Uh, they seem to get on. It was fine. Unfortunately, we got that in a flashback cartoon from 1937 or yeah, 38. We so, uh, we don't really know what happened between then and 1937. Well, there was definitely some rift caused. Except we know that human tunes and animal tunes in 1937 do not live together. No, they like, do not they get do, on. They do not get on. We For don't some know, unknown reason. We don't know what happened, but we know that the humans uh, live basically out in the desert. Yeah. And the tunes live in the cities. They've been shunned from 
society, as it were. So that's that's all we know from pre nineteen thirty seven at this point, really. Yeah. Um. So we started watching in nineteen thirty seven. We did. Porky and Daffy. Uh, uh, it was it was it was such a it was such a good marrying of good friends. Yeah. So it's uh. It would really carve the the format for the first part of this mm, story as the definitely. Uh, the, I'm not going to say friendship, the relationship between Porky Pig and Daffy Duck. Yeah. Uh, in this instance, they were just out hunting across paths. Little did either of them know, like, the, the, the friendship and, and the, <laughs> the, the toil and oh, they, 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 trials and they, tribulations they, they big that they were going to go them. through. Big things. Um, so, uh, at this time in 1937, uh, Porky Pig was working as a contractor in the city, uh, we got some insight into the government at the time, yep. uh, which was a sort of laissez-faire socialist uh, state uh, run by monkeys <laughs> um, who basically taxed everything to buggery and uh, spooged, I, spooged money into the state. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, it seemed to work out for them at the time. Yeah, it seemed to be going, everyone seemed happy. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of unemployment going on, which was quite nice. But yeah, we, we, we rated it as unsustainable. But yeah. at the time, Porky Pig's working as a contractor in the city, then at a gas station, then as a train driver. Yeah. Uh, like, he gets through a, a lot of jobs. He does get through a lot of jobs, but he does get through a lot of jobs by being better than other people at them for a small period of time. Yeah, so that's something we discovered yeah. uh, early on, was the way you get a job in the Tooniverse uh, is to uh, just turn up to, so- to the job you want where someone else is currently doing it and prove that you're better at yeah, it. Yeah, just outperform them. Yeah, you just do it. Yeah. And then it's your job. Yep. And they're out they're out on the And ears. you know somebody's out there in the wings somewhere willing but to outperform you. The unemployment tax uh is very, very high. And you you, you, you could just go on the ben- on benefits for a bit until you sidle up to a job you want and that is true. show that you're slightly better at one aspect of it than the person currently doing it. There was definitely limits to who could go on to benefits and who could not though. That's true. Well, who do we decide couldn't be on the benefits? Well, you you you, you had to um, you had to pass a test to be within society. Ah, uh, like, yeah. Not just anybody could join. Uh, we discover that a bit later. We do. So we'll get there. Uh, so Porky Pig has a certain relationship with his dog that we noticed. Uh, yeah. He's he's sort of sentient. His dog isn't. Yeah. Like, or at least we didn't think he was. But early on, we we thought, oh, maybe maybe it's sort of a dom sub thing. Yeah. And uh, we're pretty sure that's correct. Oh, yeah. But like, like, like Porky Pig has quite a few um, pets in his time, and a lot of them are sentient, but like to be treated as just pets. Yeah. It's uh, just what he's into. It's just what he's into, and it's just what the dog's into. Yeah. Um, Everyone's happy. So, uh, do you want to talk about the, pre- the premise of Toon Sentience a bit? Yeah, so we, we first came up with the idea of... Um, uh, what we call the moment where we saw Egghead go to be a cowboy and he chases around a small calf, which is just a normal baby cow, and stresses this cow out so much that this cow now starts running on two legs. It has the ability to, to defy gravity. It basically just snaps into sentience. In full, into full toon mode. Yeah, and, and like, so it discovers it's got toon powers, and it's almost sort of like an X-Men-esque sort of moment where high stress unleashes uh, dormant abilities that it would seem every toon has. Yeah, so like that's an underlying sort of theme of of the of the Tooniverse is that sort of rift between the sort of super sentient tune and your your regular animal tune. Yeah. Uh and yeah, just it requires a moment of extreme stress. You flip into full sentient tune mode uh to deal with the situation basically. Yeah. And then you stay there. And you, you stay you, there. You don't revert back. We've never seen a tune revert back to no. sub sentience. Uh so uh that's that's why Toons are the way they are, yeah. or at least the Toon Society is. Uh, I've got the portal here. The portal is uh, the way we view the Tooniverse and the way they can view us. Yeah. Uh, the rings at the start of a Warner Brothers cartoon. It's like a wormhole. Time and space. Very all wibbly Interdimensional 
wormhole. We, we, we are still unsure as to the exact nature of the portal, where it's come from, how, yeah. how it came to be about. We don't know. Yeah, we, we come to some ideas about it, but we're not entirely sure. We do know it's there, though. We know it's there, yeah. and we know it works both ways. Oh, it does. Uh, we know it works both ways because in 1938, uh, there was a... Uh, we call it the murder at the threshold. Yeah. Uh, I d- I, I, it was a a human from our side was gunned down in yeah. the theatre uh, through the, the portal. Through the portal. Yeah. So two bullets came flying through and gunned down a human. And there was no repercussions. Yeah, it was covered up. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that it was covered up uh, made us wonder if there's some sort of like there's there's for a long time been some sort of agency on on this side of the portal yeah who is who has known about this yeah it just it is, is is aware of it uh i got us worried for our safety it did uh, we're okay at the moment though we're still fine and yeah. it's been a long time since then it has but, you know, i think that was like episode six we yeah, went maybe like, they just haven't listened to it yet <laughs> <laughs> it seems likely <laughs> yeah uh yeah, um, to be part of Toon Society, you have to pass something called the Trouser Test. Yeah, so th- th- this was a concept that we came up uh, when we were looking at various tunes becoming sentient and how they would then go into joint society. And we noticed that certain tunes were wearing certain amounts of formal clothing. Yeah, normally two items. Yeah, so they seem to have to go through a test and that allowed them to enter society, which allows them to claim benefits. So there is an upside to taking the trouser test where you can, you know, get job, you know, you can get your housing benefits, you yeah. get all these different things. So until you've done that, you can't be supported by the state, basically. No. Uh, yeah, again, it's that heavy state intervention. It's that super socialist monkey government rule. Yeah. They, uh, so they, they, they did seem to be um, something which I believe we called the Pig Brother Programme. Uh, where yeah. you would get a if you were about to take your trouser test, if you maybe a few months out, you get a mentor uh, who was there to kind of help guide you through, and you know, because if you're born sentient, obviously you've got your parents there. You don't need to take your trouser test. You're just allowed into society that way. But if you snap into sentience, and we saw Daffy Duck do this, yeah. Uh, well, we didn't see him snap into sentience, but we saw. He was sentient Porky but outside Pig. of society. Yeah, we saw Porky Pig essentially mentoring him into society so that he could possibly take his yeah. trouser test. It was a rocky road, but... Oh, it wasn't a just. Uh, so, uh, at some point, I think 1938, some tunes escaped through the portal. Yes. And uh, that gave us some insight into uh, the relationship between our universe and theirs because things really escalated like uh, yeah they, it, well th- like that was when we noticed um the the kind of the beginnings of the second world war started to escalate quite heavily and really quite quickly after these like, two o- over over a sort of two week period yeah uh at the end of which uh we saw uh what we think was uh someone covering up those tunes re-entering yeah, the there, there, there was something very weird gone on with the been with, sort of with the portal. Yeah, there, there, there was almost like a screen went up. Yeah, you like they were sneaking mixed, them back in. Yeah, like rather than just the flashcards at the start with the episode names yeah. coming up, you saw someone pull down a screen. Yeah, and go back up, and suddenly things sort of mellowed out again in our world for at least a little while. Yeah, um, and so that's when we uh, realized that both, firstly, both sides of the portal must have an agency. Yes, that are that is aware of the portal um and are there to sort of deal with the the repercussions so there's some sort of escape tune uh squad yes like, uh the escape tune agency or or yeah, similar it was we called it, them the eta at the time but i yeah. think they're more like a like a squad within the agency yes yeah uh, so, so so we we decided that the agency i mean well, well so we decided we've discovered that the agency is actually a um, a joint organisation between our world and their world. Yeah, we imagine it like uh, the big round table in Doctor Strange Love, with them like with it. It's like alternates sat, yeah. like human from our world, tune human from our world, tune. Yeah, uh, and yeah, we don't know. We don't. 
I think they've particularly got evil machinations. They're just there to just try and keep it in check because yeah. they don't think the population can handle this information. I mean, they're, they seem to be doing a pretty good job because, you know, up until now, the vast majority of people were unaware. Certainly, certainly on our side of the portal, yeah. unaware. Um, so the next thing on our list is Eggheads. Now, we thought Egghead was one character for a, a fair period of time. Yeah. He's this little guy, uh, like big red nose, uh, don't, doesn't really have much in the way of power of speech and stuff. He holds no. up a lot of signs. Yeah. Um, so, Egghead, we think, is when an egg becomes sentient. Yes. Right, it, you know, there's it gets- a threat to the egg, it, like the egg... <clears throat> You know, it's lucky enough to suddenly, in a flash, yeah, in the snap moment, into sentience. snap into sentience and gain the the gumption and the elbow grease to not get smashed up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for a, a long while, we didn't really know what egghead or indeed, as we've discovered, the multiple eggheads were. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but that's what we, we think they are. And they started to crop up at around this time. Um, and yeah, well, like... We have more discoveries about them in a bit, but it, it takes us a while to reach that conclusion. Yeah, I think. It, it, it was an interesting time to see something quite simple. I mean, we'd seen a certain items uh, and things like that become sentient, but not to that sort of level. This was the first time we saw... Yeah. Also, uh, up, up until this point, it's been very much a Porky or Porky and Daffy story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the portal uh, seems to uh, have started focusing on uh, two new... Entries, I guess, yep. into the Pantheon. Uh, Egghead, or the Eggheads, as we now know them to be. Yeah. Uh, and a, a rabbit on the peripheries of society. A yeah. rabbit with black tips to his ears and yellow gloves. And, you know, he's... We don't really know... Re- he doesn't seem to get involved ever with he's anyone very else's... very reclusive, is this rabbit. He doesn't seem to be involved with anyone else's no. shit. He doesn't seem to want to be involved with anybody else's stuff. He, he wants to be outside of society happily. He's just waiting in the wings for his time. Yeah. Uh, and we, don't really know, we didn't really know what was going on there. He no. was just hanging about. So who was this rabbit? Uh, so as we started watching the eggheads more and more, uh, we started to see them in sort of a variety of historical situations. Yeah, we, we like, like medieval we saw, time, like uh, uh, sort Aladdin, of Aladdin sort of one, yeah. uh, uh, Native American sort of one, um, and we thought they, like they can't all just be like flashbacks. They can't all just be, you know, back in time scenarios with the same egghead. And we kind of knew work? they weren't because a lot of them had like neon signs yep. or like little cars. modern day, like, like calendars with dates on. And yeah, it was so like, it just like this is weird. It didn't add up. No, uh, and we realised that. Like eggheads don't live long. Eggheads don't live very long. But they're not going to get a lot of life experience. But they have rights. God damn it. Well, of course they do. And and in this monkey government situation where you know they are very socialist, they want to make sure that everyone's taken care of. Because each one, I think we've seen, has passed the trouser test. Yeah. Because I think that's when that. So an egghead, like obviously, if an egg became sentient, you know, it's not got much going on. No. But uh, animatronic. These bodies, definitely though. have bodies. Yeah. Um, and we yeah we think they can somehow pilot them yeah uh, from the egg, uh, something developed by the you know the uh, the the boffins uh, <laughs> under the laissez-faire monkey government um, cobble together some nice animatronic bodies. For so them. instead of two items of formal clothing, we think an egghead uh, on proving its uh, sentience, sentience uh, is gifted one of these bodies yeah. and. Uh, Essentially, a lifetime subscription to uh, what we called the Experience. Yeah, so they were, so, so they were essentially um, mail order experiences, so that during their short life they could get to do vastly wondrous things. So we saw like uh, one of the eggheads took up boxing because he wanted to know what it was like to be a world champion. Uh, we saw one of them go off to like an Arabian night sort of thing because he wanted to, you know, get the princess and do the whole Aladdin Yeah, and they get bit. a full-on experience. Yeah, uh, like, like, there's a lot of money gets poured at this because there's a lot of actors going about. It's, yeah. it's pretty fantastical. There seems to be two, like, real levels of the experiences. There's the sort of full theme, themed yeah. uh, kind like of full immersive. environment, full immersive experience, yeah. which... And then there's more sort of uh, low key ones, like the boxing one. Like it just came in a box. Stuff, it came in a box. Yeah. It trained to be a boxer, and then 
like it would emulate the experience. Yes. Um, so my thinking on it always was that they can do as much of the smaller experiences as they like, and when their when their time's nearly up, they get to do. They get a big one. They get they get the big one. Um, and then, and then they pass pass on, right? Like, yeah, and, and and that's it. Like like whether you whether know, the egg goes off or yeah, it, it it it's hard to know or whether or not they just crack under the pressure. That's the thing, yeah. Because like it's it's a lot of pressure being sentient, and within an egg, there's not a lot going on really. So you know, there's not much brain power in an egg. Yeah. So so uh, so that's how we sort of deal with the egghead struggle with sentience and their struggle with society as a whole. Yeah, uh, is through these sort of weird reservations. Uh, speaking of struggling with society, uh, about around this sort of time, uh, Daffy had par- just passed his trouser test. Yes. Yeah. And he was really struggling. Like his sort of wackiness started to become really sort of tragic. Yeah. Uh, really quite dark. He was as really well. struggling to muck in and like. It manifested in in often near sort of near murderous streets. Yeah, and 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 largely directed at his at this point good friend Porky. Yeah, because uh, Porky Pig has poured his his heart heart and soul into yeah, the pig. Brother really program. wants him, Really wants Daffy to make it, but and Daffy's really struggling at this point. Yeah, uh, but he finds his footing uh, in Hollywood. He does, uh, where he manages to become a director for at least a short while. He, he does quite a good job of it as well, actually. Well, yes, but this is when we, like, confirmed that the Toon world is watching ours just like we, you and I, are watching them. Yeah, so so, so Daffy... Daffy's in, film. Yeah, is essentially just a cut-together reel, uh, reels of almost documentaries from our from world. From our world, yeah. So it means that he's basically just walked into an archive um, centre... And just grabbed a load of films and just cut them together. And that was how he ended up getting a job as a director. But it did tell us that we've been filmed a lot. <laughs> like, a not, lot. Not, not us two directly, we no, think. No, because but... we, we're watching our... Uh, yeah, that's the thing to understand, is we're watching archived footage. Yes. Like, through the portal, yeah. just as he was. Yeah. Um, we're just doing it a lot later. So we're you know, we're watching archive footage from 1937, 38, 39. Yeah. Um and yeah, he's doing he's doing similar but after a short thing. So a tune couldn't leap out of the TV into our living room. No, not unless we were watching a brand new cartoon and the portal happened yeah, to be as it aired. through our TV and and as far as I know the portal is not activated through our TV. Uh so that's when we knew we were being watched uh, around this sort of time as well. We saw a lot of, uh, like, double bills sort of came in. And yeah. the second episode of was always double nonsense. Bills was always, like, yeah, just, like, cobbled together nonsense. Just yeah. random characters, like, just panning shots. Yeah. Not a lot going Doing on. Doing a thing. Uh, and we think after the original Escapes Tune situation that the agency was rehearsing for Escape Tune scenarios. Yes. So basically, rather than leaving them in our world for two weeks, which is what had happened previously, yeah, they can get them it, back and in and wreak havoc. Quick. We think our side of the agency went, look, that cannot happen again. Yeah. Like, that cannot be allowed to occur. And uh, so the, like, Tune Retrieval squad yeah. was just getting... They were drilling, basically. It's just like, we're going to be doing double bills. The second one, we're going to have to cobble together a cartoon real quick. Yeah. Like, just so people looking through the portal aren't suspicious... And then we'll just get the tunes back in, like immediately after they escape. Yeah, and um, I mean, like, like, like chances are that's when uh, the agency probably started getting control of the portal because the portal, as far as we know, had just been opening randomly at these different points uh, on these different tunes. But for them to practice, they w- must have gained control or some level of control over the portal. Yeah, I think so. Maybe like as it's closing, they can keep it open. Yes. Yeah. Stick a wedge in or something. Yeah. <laughs> crowbar in <laughs> just pull it open it back up but we're not sure uh we believed by this point uh simply because the cartoons seem to be like a medium and because the agency is gaining control uh and the fact that they always seems to open up on porky or daffy by this point yeah or like with a few exceptions uh that porky and daffy are in the know uh, about the portal and the agency. Yes, yeah, they're, 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 they're in on it. They live a point. sort of double life. So, like, I mean, they are... 
they're celebrities by yes. this point in both yeah. our world and the Toon world. And the agency sort of has to leverage that. Um, so, yeah, up until this point, we believe that was the case. However, this is sort of the point where we see Porky and Daffy both start to settle down with families. Porky with Petunia. Yeah. Daffy with what we presume was his like duck wife from before, before, him, before he became sentient and joined yeah. society. Because she doesn't seem... No. She, 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 she seems... Like, sub-sentient duck. Yeah. But, you know, he loves but her. He loves her. Yeah. They've always been together, and this presumably allows him to bring her, to, in some semblance, into society with him or or support his family in so, some so, way. So, so, so kind of like a bit of a green card situation. Yeah. Like, oh, you're, you're like, 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 you can live in society because... Because I'm working. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, uh, we've got this covered. Yeah. So, Porky settles down with uh, Petunia, uh, and Daffy uh, settles down with his duck wife. Um... At this sort of juncture, we start to see another character creep in, Sniffles. Yes. Who is undeniably Fivel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fivel goes west. Yeah. So, like, Sniffles comes in, and this is one of the first times we see a regular occurring character, not from a um, more American side of the world. So, this is set um, very sort of European and... We can tell that by the buildings, yeah. uh, you know, just the everything that goes around sort of sniffles and the environment that he's in just tells us that it is definitely a European side. And that's pretty much the first time we see something which isn't Absolutely. sort of US based. It also is the first uh, sign we see of not only interdimensionality between our world and like the Looney Tunes like yeah. universe, but whatever universe five was from. Uh, yeah, Fivel is from. Yeah, because um, at some point... Like he's acting Sniffles, over here, he's yeah. acting over there. Sniffles must go from the Tooniverse to a different Yeah, um, and we think he does. Universe. Like, yeah. Because we, we believe he gets uh, swapped out, but uh, we'll get to that. So Porky and Daffy's families. Daffy's family, unconventional, but ultimately... Seems to work seems to okay work. from at the time. Porky's family, not so much. Now, in a... No. a like, in a previous episode, Porky had been mistaken for an escaped uh, criminal. Yeah. Uh, no, no, known only to us as killer. Yeah. Wonder uh, what he got pulled away from. Yeah. Wonder what, <laughs> wonder what he got bunged in prison for. Um, but Porky uh, aids the police in putting killer back behind bars. Yeah. And I think at this point he is dating Petunia. He's as well, dating isn't he? Petunia at the time. Yeah. At last, he's finally finally you know, finally got sorted there. it out. Um, however, at the end of that episode, Petunia is kind of into killer. Yeah, she goes she, off she, with she him, likes the bad even boy. though he's getting put in prison. Yeah, but a little later, he's Porky is settling down with Petunia, uh, presumably because Petunia has had a child. Yeah, and she definitely seems to be passing off this kid as if it's Porky. Now, this kid, this kid's a little shit. Yeah, like, so I think this was the point where we realised that um, violence, it, like within a nature, is hereditary. hereditary. Yeah, yeah. So, like, these aspects of people's personality do seem to be hereditary, which is interesting. Yeah. So at this point, we're looking at the way this kid is treating everything around him, but mainly Porky. Yeah. Uh, and looking at him, just going, "That's killer's kid." Yeah. That is killer's kid. It There's is no obviously way. killer's kid, and Porky. Whether it's known to him or not, settles down with Petunia and, yeah. is, and, at this and point, is raising this kid. And at this point, stands down from his role as Porky Pig. Yeah, so he, so, so, so he takes a step back, he's settling down with his family, you know, he's spending a bit of time with them, which is good. So at this point, like, it seem, it's important for the agency to employ a new Porky Pig. And they do. We get uh, a younger... Like, young whippersnapper. Young whippersnapper. Yep. Up and comer. Porky the, Porky the fourth. Yes. Uh, as we've uh, worked it out. Um, so Porky the fourth, he's young. He's, he, you know, he's going for it. Like he's, he's an up and comer. Yeah. He really hams up the stutter. He really like, does ham it up. It is unbelievably recognisable whether Not, yeah. it is Porky the third or Porky the fourth. It is so obvious in that a cartoon. Porky the fourth is just so young and inexperienced so let's talk briefly about 
how we got to him Porky being the Porky fourth. the Fourth. Yeah. So we have seen previously Porky's dad. Yeah. Uh, Porky's dad we know is uh, 48. Yeah. We have Porky in 1937 uh, pegged at about like, you know, 30. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Porky's dad had Porky quite young. Uh, but he was, his his father was the first. Yeah, the original, the original Porky, Porky Pig. Porky pig. Yeah. Um, He's the one you see bursting out the drum at the end. Yeah. Uh, you can tell, like, you can see that the one bursting out the drum at the end at this point, like, he's got wrinkles and stuff. We think, like, the, the burst out the drum and say, uh, that's all, folks, uh, was, like, the parting gift to him when he stopped, when he stood down from the role and passed yes. it on to his son. It was kind of like a pension. Yeah. He gets to just be the guy who bursts out the drum and say, that's all, folks. Yeah. Um, Porky the second is Porky's dad. Yeah. Uh, he did not, he was not in the role for long. No, uh, he, he, times he, he had changing. some problems with them. Times with were the changing. Um, and uh, there was a lot of racism in those early cartoons. Yeah, a lot, a lot was expected from the Porky of the time to just uphold those and just kind of go with the script. And uh, Porky the Second didn't want to. He didn't want to go with the script. No. So he, he did yeah, maybe, maybe not even one episode. We're yeah. not even sure. But he was in there somewhere. Yeah. For either an episode or just flat out refused, didn't go in. Porky the Third, the Porky we've been viewing up until this point. He, he loved was, the show business. He, he was willing to he, do anything for yeah. it. And like, pr- presumably because he looked up to his grandfather. He yeah. was like this big famous actor. He told many stories, sat on his knee. Yeah. And Porky uh, just rolled with it. He and did. that's that's why we, we see a lot of questionable stuff in yeah. his porky the third episodes no definitely he 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 agreed to do uh some horrible horrible sketches and it's very possible you know under the right circumstances he probably never would have done them i don't think he would have chosen to do it if it wasn't just nope i want to be a star and he did it absolutely so and that brings us to porky the fourth who's the who's the the porky who's currently in yes uh, barring a quibble that we'll get to but i don't want to no, you don't want to ruin things too early. Don't want to do it now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, next up, we have Elmer Fudd. Now, Elmer Fudd is the egghead who made it. Yeah, he's the only one who didn't crack under the pressure. He's the only one who dealt with sentience and hatched. Yeah, because we, like, eggheads previously, like, they visibly sort of get more and more manic and insane until... Yeah. Until they're just done. Yeah. But the brains are scrambled. Elmer managed to keep it under control, and the egg hatched. Yeah, and from that came. Although he's got a big bulbous head, which presumably still filled most of the egg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he hatched, and uh, he's got a full human body. He has. It's a real Pinocchio story. Yeah, it, it's it's like he's oh, a real boy. Yeah, he is. It, and what a character he is! Like he doesn't. I don't rem- know how much of his egghead life he remembers how much of the experience because he seems kind of new and a bit bewildered by society yeah but we don't think he has any recollection of his egghead life no we think he's he's pretty sure he you know he's come out as a fully formed human and just believes that he's always been yeah fully formed human yeah i think over time he sort of builds like a false backstory and sort of childhood for himself yeah we don't think it exists it's kind of like the memory implants in uh, uh, Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. Yeah. yeah, it's just like yeah, something's happened there. Well, that's it because because the agency wouldn't know what to do with them. Society wouldn't know what to do with them because they'd never seen an egghead hatch before. Yeah. So it's like, what do we do now? Uh, and uh, largely, I think the answer is nothing. Just yeah. let them get on with well, it. Well, they have to. They have to give them their trouser test certificate. That has to be a given. But he's passed the trouser test. Well, exactly as an egg. Yeah, but he doesn't remember all of that. Uh, so during this sort of uh, time, we've got a lot of we've got a fair few Elmer heavy episodes, but we also have uh, like we and we were part of this. We we were disappointed with the performance of Porky the Fourth. Yes, we didn't like him as much as Porky the Third. For all Porky the Third's flaws, he was Porky just a better Fourth Porky. Wasn't delivering. For no, us. he wasn't. He, he like he he wasn't really kind of whiffing his lines, but he was just he was laying it on too thick. He just wasn't as entertaining. Yeah. Um, and this view is clearly shared by the studio because yeah. this is where you know, a, a sort of game changer came in in a couple of ways. Uh, 
One, we had archived footage of tunes in our world. So, like, yep. you know, what we would describe as live action footage. With tunes at in the it. Stu- at the Warner Brothers studio. Yeah. And Porky and Daffy were out and about, and they were talking to... They were uh, quibbling over contracts. Yeah, they were quibbling over contracts. Yeah. Uh, at the studio. Yeah. Um, but uh, during this process... We're pretty sure that Daffy and Porky the Third, while Porky the Fourth was in our world, yeah, sort of took care of him. Yeah, something definitely happened. We saw, like, we saw Porky we saw the Fourth change. go into a side room. Yeah, we saw Daffy go into the side room. Yeah, and then standard fighting noises. I think Porky the Third was waiting in that room. And Daffy came in behind Porky the Fourth, so he couldn't and leave. And they rumbled him. And they and they, they rumbled him. Yeah. And then back into the office comes Daffy and Porky. Yeah. And it's and the thing is, it's they, clearly Porky the Third. And it switches in in this one yeah. episode. It clearly switches. Yeah. And they negotiate the contract amiably, and Red t- and Porky the Third, Makes presumably having discovered that it's Killer's kid, and going, "Do you know what? I don't want any part of this." Yeah. Returns to his life in pictures, leaving Porky the Fourth for dead. Yeah. Oh God! What and what a time it was! What a time! And seeing that switch, just seeing it happen on screen was, ah, oh, it was bloody impressive. Yeah. But it did lead to ah, oh, Daffy and Porky, pretty dark characters. They're willing to do some pretty dark things. Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> the question is, you know, how much how much of it do we think is because Daffy feels like he owes Porky? Um. We did help him through some troubling times. Because Daffy also seemed to try and warn him about the Petunia situation. Yeah. But he was, he was not wasn't having listening. Much, wasn't having much of Eyes it. Eyes were clouded. Uh, at this point, the, the rabbit in the wings, he's changed his gloves. Oh, he has. He's put on some white ones. His demeanour hasn't much changed, but he's sort of creeping into the peripheries of society yeah. and starting to torment a certain egghead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Elmer Fudd, as he is now known. Uh, it's still very peripheral. He's still not really, you know, that involved. No, he's, but... he's, he's, he's starting to take an interest in this particular um, character, though, yeah, isn't he? He's starting to take an interest in Elmer. He's taken an interest in Elmer specifically. and Possibly start... because he's just come into society. Yeah, he's something new. Yeah, something different. But for some reason, this rabbit like sees something there and at this point that's all we really knew uh, he sees something there yeah not a glimmer of hope that something interesting might come out of it and so they meet oh they do in quite in quite a and he says legendary way what's up doc and there it is and that's really all we know at this point yeah uh but it was a realization for us uh, the appearance of the rabbit has sort of started to change. Like, yeah. It's more humanoid, I guess. Like, yeah, his, 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 his face is changing, his posture's changing. Um, his outlook on life seems to seems be changing. To be slightly changing. Uh, so does a certain mouse. Yeah. Uh, at this point, the Sniffles cartoons take a dark turn. His mind seems to be deteriorating. Uh, he has befriended a bookworm who we think is basically looking after him and sort of keeping him in check, as in it were. In check. Uh, and he needs it. He's, he's falling apart. At this point, we think the original Sniffles has left the Tooniverse to go and star in Five All Goes West. Yeah. Um, and left in his stead... Uh, a drunk, basically. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's the only thing that can explain the change between the, the the sniffles we saw right at the start and this just mess of a mouse. Yeah, it's just it's deteriorating. He's, he's an absolute mess all of a sudden. Yeah. And his ears are smaller. They're not big and floppy like nope. Fivals. They're, they're nope. smaller now. But he's still being pushed as sniffles. Yeah. So we th- I think there's been a gen- genuine body swap situation there as well. Yeah. We and, have and, thus and, far and, never seen the original sniffles again. No, no, we haven't. Well, I mean, unless you watch Five or Goes West. 
Oh, yeah. Or American Tale. Yeah. Because Five of Gore's West was the second one. Yeah, yeah. But I think he was in the first one, but then he just never came back after no, the second one. No. He popped out the first time. Then he thought, I'm I like this. it out here. But yeah, we, we, we end up, we, we, we're given a drunk mouse in replacement. Absolutely. And yeah, we, like, we just see him. And we've just watched him just go downhill get, and get downhill. worse and worse and, and worse. It's been harrowing. Yeah. But it's a good thing he did meet Bookworm, though, because it did lead him to write a lot of help guides for himself. Yeah, he wrote a lot of self-help guides to keep himself in check when inevitably Bookworm can't deal with his friendship anymore. Yeah. But we'll, we'll get there. We will. So an episode around this point uh, took us back to a billion trillion years BC in the two of us. Now, there was a porky-like pig. There was. And although this episode didn't particularly answer much in terms of the overarching, um, you know, story of the Tooniverse, what it did tell us is something about the portal. Yeah. And that's that, for whatever reason, it locks on to 